Welcome to this lecture of microscale transport process. What we have been discussing is immiscible flow through a micro channel. We have introduced several dimensionless numbers that controls the flow of bubbles, flow of two phases, flow of bubbles or droplets through a micro channel. Now there are certain issues uh, concerning this flow and we have uh, talked about uh, what the difficulties are in introducing this meniscus or inserting the meniscus of a bubble or a droplet inside the micro channel. What kind of pressure drop one would encounter if they want to introduce this meniscus. Now th these, these we have discussed. So what we will do in today's class is we will go into something called a Bretherton analysis where we would like to find out how the pressure drop would vary, how, how, what would be the expression for pressure drop, how pressure drop will change with velocity or surface tension between the two phases. So what would be the theory, how would, how can we theorize this, uh, this, this flow process and conclude what would be the pressure drop. So let us get into this, this analysis now. What we have been talking about is a uh, a micro channel and then we have bubbles placed axis symmetrically that is the idea. What we mean by axis symmetric placed axis symmetrically means that you have this is the axis. So bubble is symmetric around this axis that is what we mean by axis symmetric uh, bubbles. So bubbles are placed axis symmetrically and these bubbles are moving with a velocity u. Now we would like to find out what would be the thickness of this, this now what, what thickness we have, thickness of this liquid layer, thickness of this annular film. Now this thickness would be varying. In fact, if you look at how the thickness would be varying, thickness would be minimum here and we will be calling this the h infinity. Okay, so, this is the minimum thickness that you have and then there would be a curvature and finally here we are talk, this we are referring as front cap and similarly on the back side we have a back cap. So, the thickness of this film it is h infinity at, uh, at, at the place where at, at around the mid plane and then it changes this, this, this thickness changes and finally this, this curvature merges with the curvature of the front cap. So that is, that is the idea. Now here what you have is we have a flow going, flow of liquid going on through this, through this annular film okay. and then liquid is sandwiched between these two, these two um, uh, bubbles as well. So you have an, and the bubbles are moving at a velocity u and the net flow of liquid and liquid and the gas is is maintained now here we so so we are calling at any arbitrary location we are calling this uh, thickness of this annular film as h okay now what we are so the assumptions that we have here is the bubble is moving at a velocity u that i mentioned then we have uh, the bubbles placed axis symmetrically within the channel that we have talked about and weighting of annular film the the the, the annular the liquid is completely weighting the wall that is that is the other thing that we are we are assuming here the liquid that is there that is completely weighting weighting the wall so we do not have any issue of contact angle here i mean it is it is just the interface between the gas and the uh, for a bubble it is gas and the liquid or or between the two phases that we are talking about here so what we have i mean let me let me let me write it down here we are considering a liquid layer of thickness h consider liquid layer of thickness h 
Now, we are talking about only the horizontal velocity here. So, the what what we will have is the shear stress on the on the free surface what is the free surface here as far as this liquid film is concerned if we isolate the liquid film on this side they ha it has the wall and on this side it has the bubble right so if we are talking about the liquid film on this side there is this wall and this side there is the bubble so you have the the upper surface you can you can say that this is called a free surface at the free surface the shear stress tau which is mu du dy that will vanish where it will vanish this will vanish here at the free surface so this is this is something which is which is happening here and we are talking about only the horizontal velocity we do not have any reason to believe that there would be a vertical velocity so under this condition we can assume a symmetry i mean what what is what is the implication of it we can say that locally the flow whose flow we are talking about flow of this liquid in that annular film locally the flow looks like bottom half of a flow between two parallel plates separated by 2 h distance under a pressure gradient d p d x what that means is that uh, what, what what would be the flow between two parallel plates separated by 2 h under a pressure gradient i mean wh what kind of what kind of flow we are talking about Typic if we, if there are two parallel plates if there are two parallel plates fixed plates and then you have a flow what kind of flow you get you get a parabolic velocity profile right what you are getting here actually is half of it so this is basically you see th th this distance is h we are talking about this this distance we are talking about this annular film as h what they are saying is the flow would be locally utilizing the symmetry you can see that the flow looks like bottom half of a flow between two parallel plates that means this flow this part of the flow this part of the flow simulates the flow here in that annular portion so that is that is what that is what you are uh, i mean that 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 you can assume and in that case you can take straight away the velocity profile for flow between two parallel plates okay and work with the uh, i mean flow between two parallel plates which has a an aperture of 2h instead of h so if we try to write that velocity this would be something like this u One by two mu y, two h minus y, del p del x. All right. So this this is coming from the flow between two parallel plates. They are separated by distance two h. Now, then in this case, if somebody wants to find out what is the volumetric flow per unit depth of microchannel, depth 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 in the sense uh, or per unit width, I should say. If you if somebody wants to know what would be the flow per unit width of the micro channel so then in that case what he needs to do is he needs to integrate this further so what what he would say in that case 
is he will write a person who wants to do this he will write uh, q at any position x t see y is gone we had u as a function of x y t so now you can write q x t that is equal to integration 0 to h x t u x y t d y All right. So, what, what we are doing is you are integrating from 0 to h u d y, uh, u d y that means the q that you are getting it is basically a flux per unit width perpendicular to the paper. So, that is that is something which you are referring to. Now, if you take this expression for u, this is the expression for u as I said that you can simulate the flow in this annular portion. Uh, the annular portion around the bubble you, if you can sim if you can simulate that flow by the flow between two parallel plates you're taking the bottom symmetric half of it so if that is that can be done here so then you can write this as the velocity profile because this is this is the velocity profile for flow between two parallel plates and then you can take this velocity profile take this expression for u and integrate it you can integrate it and if one integrates this what he will get is something like this 1 by 3 mu h cube del p del x. So, that is what he will get as q. Now, so, so, so what, what you are doing what you are doing here is basically you if somebody knows what is h at a particular x see here q x t. So, q is a function of x and t. What is x? x is the distance in this direction x x is this position x here x is there and y is here. So, you know the x position if you know the x position if you know the time. So, you can find out what would be the flux per unit depth or per unit width and that is equal to 1 by 3 mu h cube del p del x and what is h? h is a function of x and t mind it I did not write it here. So, h is a function of x and t. So, h varies with position, h varies with time and then on top of this you have a del p del x. So, this is an expression for q. What, 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 we, are, what we are trying to do here? Let me, let me recapitulate once again. We are trying to find out if we introduce bubbles or two phases basically bubbles or droplets basically if we introduce two phases inside a micro channel then we would encounter a pressure drop and it was found that inserting a meniscus into the micro channel is not an easy job. So, if you if you really insert that and if you want to know what would be the pressure drop then how do you approach it. So, one thing is there that uh, first of all you would like to know what would be this thickness of this annular film and once you have that probably you can get some feel what would be the pressure drop. So, that that is what you are trying that is what you are approaching that is that is that is why we are getting into this analysis. So, for that what we have said is that if we have these if we have this bubble if we have this wall and if we have this as the annular film the flow because liquid will be flowing through this annular portion bubble will be moving at a velocity u but liquid is also be flowing because you are introducing liquid and the gas at the inlet so gas liquid would be flowing and it would be flowing through this this direction as well so how would you how would you find out the velo what would be the velocity profile and the one said that okay this can be the symmetric bottom half of flow between two parallel plates and that is how you have gotten u and that is how you are getting integrating it to obtain q so, that is what you have done. Now, now the issue here is how you introduce the effect of surface tension in this process. See, this is this is all nice and dandy. You have the velocity profile uh, as a function or, or you have a flow rate as a function of the and thickness annular thickness and the pressure gradient. Now, how how what what sigma has to do with this? 
we write here that the effect of surface tension effect of surface tension is to give a jump in the normal stress across the fluid surface of sigma into curvature what it says is effect of surface tension is to give a jump in the normal stress across the fluid surface oh, this this jump in jump in normal stress this jump in normal stress the value is sigma into curvature we have sigma divided by r by 2 and all kinds of things we have so sigma into curvature is that is the effect of surface tension so here we are talking about this car, where is the curvature here we have a bubble or a droplet so this is this is this is the x direction this is the x direction and this is the y direction so we can we can consider this arc we can consider this arc and we can write this arc as y is equal to f x this arc can be written as y is equal to f x ok. So, if s if s measures arc length arc length along the curve y is equal to f x. So, s measures the arc length along the curve and if psi is equal to psi is angle between the tangent and the x axis x axis the x is this this direction this is x and tangent is this is the tangent so the angle is psi this angle is psi angle between these two is psi so in that case you can write the curvature curvature is written as equal to d psi d s and this is written further as if y is equal to f x is the original function I mean we are just talking about a geometry here. So, we the, this this can be written as f double prime divided by 1 plus f prime square to the power 3 by 2 that that is that comes from geometry you can check check the geometry and these can be approximated as f double prime for nearly flat interface where f prime is much less than 1. So, you can consider the curvature to be equal to f double prime if that is what the understanding is then in in your case the y is basically the h you, you remember what is h in this whole analysis we are talking about this height as h this height as h so h is changing with x that that is exactly what we have done see here we put h as a function of x and t here we have uh, in here also in the integration limit we put h as a function of x and t. So, h is changing with x and in your case basically y is synonymous to h. So, in that case the curvature so you can write the curvature 
of a nearly flat interface y is equal to instead of f you would write h x and t. So, then in that case you can write this curvature is equal to curvature is approximately equal to del square h del x square right f double prime and f is basically you are you are you are saying f and uh, I mean this is synonymous. So, you can you can write this as curvature as del square h del x square. Now, if that is what the curvature is now you started with what you said that effect of surface tension is to give a jump in the normal stress across the fluid surface and that jump is the, the, the magnitude of this jump is sigma into curvature all right. So, in that case what you can write is the pressure P pressure P that, 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 that jump that, that jump you can write that jump to be equal to sigma that, that pressure jump is so th this is basically so so you are talking about sigma into curvature so sigma into curvature the sigma into curvature would be equal to in this case sigma into curvature this would be in this case would be sigma into del square h del x square so if somebody wants to know what is del p del x in this case so del p del x would be equal to sigma del h del cube h del x cube because sigma is constant okay so now if somebody works with these del p del x if somebody works with del p del x that means the surface tension driven del p del x so what is the original expression for u we have been working with we have been working with u as u of the the original expression for u was that this is equal to 1 by 2 mu y into 2 h x t minus y into del p del x. So, this here you have instead of del p del x you will bring in instead of this del p del x term you will be bringing in this quantity. This, this, this expression for u came from that flow between two parallel plates 0 to between uh, uh, with the thickness being 0 to the, the, the distance between two parallel plates is 2 h. So, based on that you have a velocity profile now instead of so only thing what you are doing is now you are changing this del p del x by this quantity ok. So, you get u is equal to this quantity and if you if you simplify this further what you should be getting is sigma minus sigma by mu del cube h del x cube into y into y by 2 minus h. If you simplify this further that means this 2 is 2 goes in there. So, you will have h minus y by 2 if you write it in instead of this if you write y by 2 minus h. So, you get a minus sign here and this is the expression and this expression uh, people who are uh, the, uh, the students or the researchers who are working on this lubrication they might have seen this kind of expression before this this is a this is a common uh, expression that is uh, th 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 this this expression is is there in theory of lubrication you have this expression but anyway we don't get, we don't um, let's not uh, divert our attention to anything else we have so we have an we have a velocity profile so what is the basis of this velocity profile you are talking about that flow in that annular portion that that annular portion that is the liquid annular liquid layer around the bubble only thing what you are doing is the del p del x term you are obtaining using this sigma into curvature 
So, that, that uh, using that expression you are getting the del p del x. So, that is how you are getting the velocity profile. Uh, I must uh, point out a uh, couple of things here at this point is that uh, this is a velocity profile which is which is as per the theory of lubrication. However, when there is surfactant present, I mean this is this is reported that when in the presence of surfactant, in the presence of surfactant which is not in, in the presence of surfactant uh, that, that this uh, I mean typically surfactants are are are, 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 uh, are divided into two categories insoluble and soluble. So, it is surfactant which is insoluble I mean which, which is the common surfactant that we work with surfactant in presence of surfactant the interface uh, let us write it insoluble, but that is the common one that we have the interface between interface between the bubble and the film behaves as a rigid wall with no slip boundary condition. In the presence of surfactant, I mean when, when there are surfactant molecules, you know surfactant molecules they have their own alignments and all and how they um, they have head they have tail and they will uh, they will uh, they will align in certain manner so in the presence of surfactant interface between the bubble and the film behaves as rigid wall with 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 no slip boundary condition so in that case what you would do is instead of instead of talking about the flow between two parallel plates two h distance apart probably you would be looking at h distance apart. So, in that case this expression here it remains very much same the expression that we have here remains very much same only thing is this h would be replaced by h by 2 ok h would be replaced by h by 2. Now, we are not going into that expression now, um, but let me let me write it down in a, in a, in a very small uh, font that this is This is this would be the expression for u in that case. Now, now we would be we would be working with this expression for u, and this is very common expression in 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 connect. You will see in connection with uh, lubrication. And now that is one thing. Another thing is when surfactant is present. There is there is another issue which we are not going to consider here, but this may matter if one has surfactant in the system. Is that when surfactant is present, when surfactant is present, the film interface, the film interface Uh, when surfactant is present now the, the, the I mean when probably I mean when surfactant is present since I should write the since the film interface is stretched the film interface is stretched irrespective of whether surfactant is present or not since film interface since the film interface is stretched considerably. compared to cap portion. So, by now by now what you what you understand what we mean by film and the cap this is what is this is what the film part and this is what the cap part what they are saying is that this part is more stretched compared to this part this part is more stretched compared to this part I think we have we have discussed this in, in a previous class that why why this would be the case. 
So, this is stretched compared compared to the cap portion. So, what what you will see is that when surfactant is present because of this effect the interfacial surfactant concentration is more in cap and less in film. Okay, the effect of this is that film surface tension the effect of surfactant is to reduce the surface tension. So, film surface tension is more or more in film less in cap. So, if this happens then you have a process by which additional liquid additional liquid will be dragged into the film. So, this implies film thickens. So, this, this, uh, this is another effect of having surfactant in the system which we are not going to consider here. So, this is this these are these are couple of the couple of effects in this condition which you would be uh, which you may be bothered with when you have surfactant uh, present in the system. Now, let us go back to our original expression I mean it just we had it deviated we just said that if you one if one has this expression for u, u is what u is the velocity profile in that annular portion the liquid portion the annular portion around the bubble. So, in that case this is the, 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 this is the case which we are not considering we are considering this is case. Now, this is the velocity profile. Now, how to go about it how because our original aim is to find out what is that thickness h and what is the pressure drop because that that is what we would be concerned with if there is a micro channel and if we want to design this micro channel for uh, a flow of liquid and gas if we have two immiscible phases flowing through that micro channel we would like to know how these uh, how these bubbles or droplets how they distribute themselves inside the micro channel and what would be the pressure drop. Now, if this is the velocity profile we have already talked about then what we will do is we will do another another aspect which I have pointed out pointed out earlier also that this uh, uh, this curvature in the cap and the front cap and the back cap these curvatures are not same in fact they have to be different apparently that that is how the bowel moves so this is also another issue anyway now what we will do to find that annular thickness and the pressure drop what we would do is next we will solve something called a material balance which we call quasi 1d mass conservation mass conservation equation. This is given by the, the, the this is basically the, this, this mass conservation equation I have seen in uh, lubrication literature, but this is uh, for bubbles uh, there, there is one uh, researcher uh, I mean uh, th this this analysis is uh, given uh, this analysis is recogni re recognizes. Uh, uh, one, one particular scientist uh, scientist who is recognized for this analysis his name is Bretherton. So, this analysis is also referred as Bretherton analysis <coughs> quasi 1 D mass conservation equation and this mass conservation equation appears like this 
del H del T plus del Q del X that is equal to 0. What is H? H you know by now. H is a function of X and T and all this we have seen. H is basically the this annular thickness H. H is changing with X, H is changing with T. So, you have on one hand del H del T and on the other hand you have something called Q which is basically you have taken the velocity profile and then integrated it, but mind it, it is, it is not exactly uh, the flow rate, it is probably flow rate per unit depth per unit width of the micro channel perpendicular to the paper. So, this is what is Q, Q is also a function of X and T and uh, since uh, that is how it is done. So, Q, Q will have, Q will not have the unit of meter cube per second, rather it will have a meter, a meter square per second and then when you divide it by meter it would be, uh, it would be meter per second and here also del H by del T. So, these are, these are unit wise that this is consistent. So, what you are assuming here is that the flow that is over x, so you, you take a differential element dx and then you see how much of q is going in, how much of q is coming out. So, difference of this is calling, you are calling it dq, dq divided by dx and that change in q is reflected by the change in height, something of that sort. So, you are, you are writing this as a quasi 1D mass conservation equation, but the problem here is that the bubble is not fixed, bubble is also moving. So, I mean we just, th this is an approximate analysis, but try to understand how it is being, how it this, this analysis is handled. Now, let us see what is Q here, Q is basically we said earlier that Q is equal to integration 0 to H x t u of x y t dy and that is equal to we said sigma h cube divided by 3 mu d cube h d x cube. We should not be writing it this way, let us write it del cube h del x cube because still we have we kept h as a function of x and t. So, del cube h del x cube. Now, what you have is that the, the bubble itself is moving at a velocity, the bubble itself is moving at a velocity u, bubble itself. is moving at a velocity u and if the bubble moves, then that is defining what should be h because if the bubble moves. So, bubble has, I said the bubble has, here it is h infinity and then this h is changing with position. If the bubble is static, okay fine, we can do that analysis, but if the bubble is moving, itself is moving at a velocity u, how will you? Uh, how, how will you justify this analysis? What is done here is in Lagrangian reference frame, in Lagrangian reference frame, moving with the bubble, bubble you write d t is equal to minus d x by u, d t is equal to minus d x by u and then in that case u, u basically, you, you basically do not have t anymore in this entire analysis, you would be putting this here, you will get del del x of sigma h cube by 3 mu d cube h d x s q. So, this is basically nothing but del q del x and these you write as u del h del x or, or rather you, you should be writing since we are writing everything t is gone now, you are writing u as d h d x, u as d h d x. So, this is, this is what you do, see in Lagrangian reference frame moving with the bubble, you can, you, you, you would be writing it like this. And this equation would be integrated to obtain h, this equation would be integrated to obtain pressure drop. So, this is this is known as, in fact, this, this is this is not the final form, 
what you would do is now you make certain make certain changes with in this in this make certain make some terms dimensionless how you do it is first of all if you if you integrate the above equation first this this equation is integrated integrate above equation from the middle point which is which is middle point is this point this point here this is the middle point i'm sorry this is the middle point here this is the middle point so from the middle point that means the flat film region where h x x x that means d q h is equal to zero that means d q h d x cube is equal to zero and that at that place you are calling h as h infinity to to some other h to 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 a transition region to to i is not the word to the transition region which is some h so if if you if you do that so that means you are integrating from this point onwards and going up not all the way to the cap but to the transition region where the film changes to the cap so this if you do in in that case you will be the the the, the solution is i mean what bretherton has obtained is 3 mu u divided by sigma h minus h infinity into h cube h x x sorry this is equal to h cube into h x x x so here that you the, it was made dimensionless in, in a way that h bar is written as h by h infinity zeta is written as x divided by h infinity x is the distance from that from that middle plane middle point that flat film region uh, where h is h infinity so that that place x by h infinity 3 mu u divided by sigma to the power 1/3 so if if this is the case then one can write h bar cube h zeta third derivative that is equal to this quantity this is famously known as bretherton equation ideally this equation should be solved numerically but uh, originally when this equation was proposed there are some analytical solution available people have integrated this expression from zeta in uh, from minus infinity to zeta changing from minus infinity to plus infinity zeta changing from minus infinity to plus infinity that that uh, people have Uh, that 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 uh, that was that has all that has been integrated, and then on top of that, this equation was uh, this equation was matched with what uh, I mean. Th there was the other uh, at the other end, you have this cap portion, and the cap portion has the has its own Laplace Young equation to to satisfy. That means delta p is equal to two sigma divided by r, where r is Uh, where r is equal to capillary radius so that that is equal to that 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 part that that is that is that is hold that is held at, at the cap cap means in this case the integration that you are doing here at the front cap so this 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 equation this equation has been has been solved with uh, with these conditions i mean th this this typically this is solved numerically however originally it was done analytically but the bottom line here is one has the final result that bretherton uh, has given and which is very uh, which is supposed to be a very powerful expression is something like this
this is the most this, this is this is the outcome i mean of, of of doing all this analysis i mean what this is the outcome this is this is this is what you have this is what you are waiting for i mean this, this is this is the final expression that he had given that with with the solution of that now now this this is ideally this is to be solved numerically and then probably getting such kind of expression is difficult but he had shown using using some kind of uh, asymptotic uh, analysis and uh, using some approximate analysis he showed that these this differential equation can be solved to obtain this final form now what is what does this say h infinity which is nothing but this height here h infinity is this thickness in this this mid plane that liquid film so this is the h infinity so h infinity is 0.64 r r is the radius of the capillary for a circular capillary it is r is the radius and uh, then 3 capillary number which is mu u by sigma to the power 2 third so that is how h infinity is and then delta p the pressure drop would be 10 r by sigma capillary number to the power 2 third. So, so this is this is this is a very important uh, this is a very important uh, formula which is which is considered uh, kind of the apex formula for the for flow of immiscible phases through a micro channel. Now, there are certain modifications, further corrections that were done. This, this, this expression that I have given is for a circular channel. This, this, this expression that one has obtained after solving a similar, uh, the, the equation system that I, that I have gone through. The equation system that I have gone through. What, what was the equation system? We had come up with a velocity profile in that annular region we obtained a q and then we have used uh, and that that is what bretherton is used quasi 1d mass conservation equation and then he had uh, he had obtained this expression and then he integrated this and he finally he obtained a, a set uh, an, an equation system which is like this h infinity and delta p is given by this so this is this is for for a circular channel that the results that i showed here this is this is th this this result is meant for a circular channel now there are uh, there is immediately there was a correction made by another researcher so after bretherton what he did is he has done a correction further correction for for number 1 uh, the correction for correction for non circular channel correction for non circular channel so there what you have is you have uh, h infinity given by 0 0.69 minus 0 0.10 ln ca and delta p divided by sigma by r that is equal to 3.14 capillary number to the power 0.14 this is the expression for uh, h infinity and delta p now here r corresponds to r corresponds to because we are talking about non circular channel r corresponds to cylindrical capillary cylindrical capillary of same cross-sectional area so r is not exactly they, they have not related it with it with, with hydraulic diameter this is how they have related r for a non circular channel so this is this is the expression that was given i i don't remember the name of the researcher who has proposed this but there was a paper where where they have uh, came up with this uh, f extension of Bretherton analysis for non circular channel. There was another issue here which is if you have a trains of bubble if you if you have 
bubble train that means one bubble coming after the other there could there was a possibility that the bubbles are separated basically bubbles are separated by another liquid film okay so that means you have a front you have a cap and that is not affected by the next bubble that is that is what you are assuming here now if the if the gas fraction is much more if, if the gas fraction is high then in that case this interface and this interface may interfere that could be a possibility in that case also people ha the researchers have uh, come up with some correction so what they have done is bubble trains where bubbles are separated by thin lamella instead of spherical cap instead of a spherical cap if that is separated by thin lamella in that case what you can do is one can one can come up with a radius say for example this is one bubble this is one bubble and another bubble starts from here itself okay so here i mean this should have been a cap complete cap this should have been a complete cap but that is not happening there is just a thin lamella between the two bubbles so in that case what they do is uh, the researchers have done is this radius they call it rc okay and then they have done uh, they have they have proposed some correlation of h infinity for rc divided by h infinity for no such situation that means the, the original cap intact that as a function of rc where rc is basically contact radius rc is called contact radius you understood what we are talking about this is the this is the channel this is this is the channel okay this is the channel this is one bubble that is the other bubble but the bubbles are not separated properly it is just a thin lamella which is separating the bubble in that case you call another radius which is called contact radius where basically this line breaks here you have the film here you have the film but beyond this point it is supposed to be a spherical cap and this should be a spherical cap separated but that has not happened so in that case one can come up with some correlation in terms of th this has been this has this is there in the literature the researchers have proposed correlations so what we are what we are heading to basically what we have done is the most important uh, important expression that you should take from here is the one that i proposed earlier for a circular channel this is the expression which is which is important in in many literature in in research papers in books you will see this this expression is quoted finally this is the expression where you have h infinity and delta p and this is the expression for non this this is a particular research paper i have seen where where this for non circular channel such expression has been derived and obtained now these expressions are important to you as far as your your work is concerned or your this class is concerned however i thought i should give you a brief uh, background of what is the origin of this bretherton analysis how what equation what is the governing equation that bretherton is trying to solve and this is something which you have basically this this is the final form i mean i have seen some places this is the form and they said this is by solving this i got this but this has a big history behind this this expression so i try to give you a flavor of what kind of analysis uh, bretherton has gone through when he when he first solved this problem so in the next class we will probably there are some some unique issues of uh, if somebody wants to wants to do electro osmotic flow okay we have we have, this has no, nothing to do with this flow but in case of an electro osmotic flow if you have a bubble introduced in a micro channel you will be surprised to see that liquid will be drawn like this but the bubble will stay there sitting there and that is the, the physics defines that 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 uh, that that problem the, the, it is the physics that that indicates that it should be that way that the bubble will be sitting in the channel static and the liquid will be just flowing around the bubbles if one if one has two electrodes 
placed at the two end of the channel. So th this is a very unique phenomena. I, I will try to show. Uh, I, I will I will go to the equation for electroosmotic flow, and I will introduce a bubble inside the channel, and I will show how this is happening. So in the next class, I will I will start with that, and then I will probably go into other other topics uh, as 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 time permits. Um, that's all I have for today's class. Thank you very much.